On One Photo Raw is a great new tool to edit your pictures. We show you a little more in depth what's possible with this software using the Browse module. In this video, we show you how to get started with On One Raw while using the Browse module. In the description below, I've included some timestamps, so if you're looking for a specific part of the module, you can access it from there. The first thing we need is our photographs. Important to On One Raw. Now, when I say import, it's not like Lightroom. It indexes them on the hard drive where they are. This creates a lightning flash browser. You can access your pictures on your local drives or even online services like Google Drive. Let's start at the top left hand corner with the browse with the indexed folders. So placing a file here indexes the pictures in the background. So when you come to uh, process your pictures, they're already had the thumbnails made and they're ready to go. Now, if you use your pictures folder, every time you place a folder into the pictures folder, that will also be indexed. So local drives, that's your hard drives. Uh, I have the Drobo, the Mac, and the Seagate, all drives that I have on my system. Now below that, we have the cloud storage, the Dropbox, Google Drive, and I have OneDrive. Now, I never process off these. I always have the pictures on the computer ready to go. Onto the album section. The album is creating collections of images. We have two pictures here, this one on this one, and we're going to just select, let's say select them with three stars. We can simply drag and drop to create a folder, or we can use a plus button and create an album or a smart album. So let's create a smart album. First, the album name. Let's call it Coniston Lake. Simply click the equals three stars. Now every picture with three stars in will be added to an album called Coniston Lake. You can also create a smart album using date ranges. And there's a selection here, or you can use a custom. Also, you can use metadata. And here's the um, all the metadata you can use, ISO, focal length. So it's quite a powerful tool to, to be able to drag those pictures automatically into an album ready for you. So now in the albums, we have Coniston Lake. And when we press on there, we have the two pictures that have three stars in. Back to the folder. Now, let's add a few more pictures with three stars. There's another two. So when we jump in the album, there they are, already populated in this area. Now, the pictures have not moved on the hard drive. They are simply being referenced from this album. Onto the filters. Now, the filters are very much like Lightroom with colors, stars, and reject photos, keep photos. There is also the ability to search by date in this section. So if you have a specific date range, you can also search by that through this section here. So using the filter separately, it's very much like we created the smart album. If we click on equals three stars, then again, the same four pictures appear because they have the three stars in. It's as simple as that. And onto the recent section. These are simply the photographs that you have recently taken through the develop module. So it's just a quick reference to get back to any pictures that you've been working on. So in the shortcut panel on the left, you have quick access to your desktop, picture folder, index folder, local drives, cloud storage, and albums. So bottom left is your preference panel. And this is just purely to bring up all the preferences from one photo raw. Below that, is a button which accesses the web and onto on one raw's help page so now onto our view preferences we can change the view from thumbnail view to photo view and to film strip view next to the view icons we have the slider for the size of the thumbnails and this simply is just slider to increase and decrease the size of your thumbnails now your pictures uh, can be sorted by this button here and we have simply date captured, color label, file name, um, ascending, descending. So it's very much like Lightroom, uh, but it's just a way of sorting your pictures into some sort of order.
Now back to the top left we have the presets section. You can place on presets direct from the browse module. I personally prefer to use this section in the develop module after initial editing has been completed. But if you wish you can add them here in on one raw browse module. Uh, now the presets can be used or you can even use your own recipes. Clicking the name will offer you the selection of the presets. So let's use film. And it comes up on the left hand side. If you click this icon here, it extends to full screen and offers you the picture with the preset applied. Now once you've decided on your preset, simply click on the picture and that will be applied to your image. So you want to add a preset and you can remember the name of your favorite preset. There's also a search bar just to search the presets. Let's say the preset was called Sunset. Sunset. And it's returned that there's three search results. Let's, uh, let's just apply Magic Sunset. And there we go, it's applied the preset. On the top right, we have our info box. So this is where the picture was just taken on a say D700 using my 2470 lens. Now the metadata is a widely overlooked section and when possible, fill out the details. So finding and filtering your pictures is quicker and easier. Firstly, select the batch of pictures you wanna add data to. So let's pick these three pictures here. So let's add the author. Emotive photography. It's come up change meta on the selected photographs and there's three pictures selected. This will come up every time unless you click the box here. And from now on, it will automatically update all the pictures that have been highlighted. So then you would add the description of your photograph, um, the lakes, etc and add keywords. Now make sure you add your keywords. It will make finding the pictures so much easier later. Let's say lakes, Coniston Lake. It was taken in October. And the more information that you add in there, it's easier if you're looking for, say in the future, you knew you took a picture in October. If you just type in October in, bring all your October pictures up. Um, but if you're also putting Coniston Lake, it's gonna bring up your Coniston Lake photographs. So the right panel here is to access the develop module, the effects module, and the layers module. Now we've decided to break down the overview into their own videos for each section. Otherwise, this would be a very long video and it'll be easier if you wanna use it as a reference video uh, if they all have their own section. Now, bottom right, we have the export button, which allows you to export to several file types. Profiles, also you can change the name on export. The sharing section also has a lot of options from AirDrop, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, even to your messages. Right clicking on an image brings up a list of options. Now in here you have the likes of your rotate, you can add your ratings in here, um, add to album, export, and the one I will use quite a bit is send to Photoshop. You can also send to Lightroom direct from here. Now highlighting a picture will allow you to add the ratings in the top corner. They're the stars and you also can have the colors from here. And also you can use the heart to like the picture or again, you can reject the picture. Now there is quick shortcuts. You can use P for like, X for reject and U to clear them both. If you want to add your color tags and star ratings using the numeric pad, um, one to nine and zero will add ratings and colors. Now the way I have my workflow set up uh, to rate the picture is simple. First of all, I do a sweep through the photographs and like or dislike them. And then I filter the like pictures out. I then go through again and process the pictures up ready. Now once they're complete, 
I assign them a rating of two stars, so I know those pictures are complete. Then if I like the picture and I think I want to use it in a slideshow, I use three stars. And four stars is ready for social media. So if I search for two stars or more, I know all those pictures are ready for the customer or ready for yourself. But it's up to you how you work your workflow out. It's a personal preference, that's just mine. Now, if you want to change the name on the pictures, it's very, very simple. Select the image you want, and there's a rename file. If you select more than one picture, it will rename files. So, really simple. Now, you have the options of current name, text, or serial number. So, let's say um, the current name will be... Uh, the code here, which is straight out the camera, and then want to add a little bit of text. Oops, Coniston Lake. And then want to add a serial number. Hit apply. And there we go. We have the original code of the picture taken. Coniston Lake 1. Coniston Lake 2. So it's really simple, easy way to rename your pictures. But again, you can also do this as you export the pictures. Let's rename some more files. And simply, let's remove the current name. So now it's going to be Constant Lake 3. And let's add current name at the back. So there we go. Constant Lake number 3. Constant Lake number four, and the original code of the photograph. Now again, to keep this video to a reasonable length, we'll be uploading all the sections of the On One Photo Raw in their own videos for the develop module, the effects, and the layers. So look out for our next videos on how to use the develop module. If you like this video, or if it was any help, please like, comment, and subscribe.